James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you a film breakdown of this week's opponent, Vanderbilt. As always, if you like this content, like the video, subscribe to this channel, check us out on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon, and check out the pod, where each and every Monday we bring you in-depth analysis of the Florida Gators. We'll start by looking at the Vanderbilt offense. Vanderbilt is actually interesting on offense. Their dynamic playmakers are all on the field right here. You'll have number seven, their wide receiver, Cam Johnson. Then you'll have number 21, Keon Henry Brooks. And then the quarterback, freshman from Texas, a three-star, Ken Seals. We're going to show you how Vanderbilt likes to run the ball, how they typically like to pass the ball, uh, which is, spoiler alert here, they like to throw bombs, which is actually pretty fun, especially for a film breakdown. And we'll get you ready for what they're going to do on Saturday. If you want the in-depth scouting report on Vanderbilt, check out the podcast where we cover them far more in detail for what uh, they like to do well, what they don't do so well. This is really more to show you some of the plays you're going to be seeing on Saturday. So when you're watching the game, you already have an idea of some of the sets and some of the stuff Vanderbilt likes to run more so than an in-depth scouting report on exactly what we could or should take away uh, on Saturday. Again, the podcast is a better medium for that. All right, let's let's jump in and take a look at this first play. It is going to be a run play. Uh, Keon Henry Brooks gets a ton of carries. He's the workhorse. They really don't have another back they use uh, anywhere near as much as they use him. And this is a run that has affected Florida all season long. We're going to see a weak side run. There's nobody down here at the bottom of your screen. So we have a weak side run. It's going to come right here. And I want you to pay attention to Kentucky's lineup and how this linebacker moves. If you've watched my previous Florida breakdowns before the channel got taken down, or now that they're back up with the Arkansas uh, breakdown as well, you'll notice this. And as the ball is snapped, take a look at the movement here. Again, weak side run. We have no help on this side of the field. Nobody's here. This linebacker is going to take a couple of steps this way. Why? Because that's his job. Again, the ball's not handed off yet. It's possible he goes this way, but his job is to fill this gap. His job is to hold the edge. His job as a safety, and they're being aggressive on this, is to come downhill, clean up anything that happens. Other linebacker is filling this gap. This is good gap defense, good sound technique here by Kentucky. This handoff does, in fact, come to the weak side. We have the unblocked player chasing, as he should. We have this linebacker who, in all reality, should already be making this tackle. He should have been a little bit more confident here going into the hole. Uh, but he's filling his gap. They make the tackle after a decent two to three yard gain. Let's rewind this one more time from the start. So what did Kentucky do right here? Kentucky is expecting run and because of that, they're committed to the run. Eight guys in the box here. One, two, and three. No safety over top. Florida should do the same. We've implored Florida to be more aggressive against the run rather than just playing a too high shell most of the time. Even though Vanderbilt does throw bombs, uh, they do like to run the ball, especially early in the game in this situation. Nice work here by Kentucky. And so on Saturday, take a look at how Florida chooses to defend uh, Vanderbilt in a wide variety of sets. Are they going to be aggressive or are we going to sit back where essentially we may have a safety here and then we may have another player here leaving us instead with only six in the box? How do we handle that? Do we have issues like we had against Arkansas where our safety comes from his spot here and goes to the wrong hole? Do we have issues with our linebackers where they wind up getting the wrong leverage, go the wrong way? Uh, we're going to find out. But on this play, Kentucky does the right thing and they get the stop. It's now the very next play. Vanderbilt has simply moved a receiver across the formation. So instead of having three on one side, they now have two and then one here at the bottom. Kentucky is going to stay aggressive against the run. I want you to note their free safety, aggressive against the run. Top of your screen, you have two receivers. Kentucky's going to wind up staying two on two on this side. One, two that you can't see. With this defender, again, being your conflict defender or your flex defender, he's either going to help on the run if it's a handoff or he's going to help on the pass if it is a pass. Same thing is going on here with the free safety. He's going to read run first. If it's not a run, then he'll bail and help out in the pass. And this corner here is just going to be locked up. So those are your responsibilities from the back end. Ball's handed off. Let's look at good gap control. What is his responsibility? Hold the edge. Nobody gets outside of you. He now recognizes this is not a pass. He is a free defender. He can help any way he decides to do so. Uh, if the running back cuts back in his lane, he can be free. Or he can obviously come down here if he tries to bounce it outside. And then everyone else should be filling. Again, this needs to be a good fill. Important role here. Does he fill here? Does he fill here? 
these are going to be reads that are going to happen as the play goes on. Kentucky's going to be patient here with this. Again, patience. He's waiting. He's not just flying in here, potentially allowing an exit hole here. And then he's going to run right into the help. So again, one more time. Let's look here. Edge control. Edge control. Free defender. This is your flex defender. Where was he at the beginning? He could have played pass or run. It's a handoff. He's not going to play the run. He's going to make sure he holds the edge. Don't let him get the edge on you, which he does. And he makes the tackle. So much of defense, especially against a team that you have better talent, is simply lining up correctly and then having each person just patiently and calmly do their job. Don't need to be a hero here. Hold up at the point of attack. Do your job. And if everyone else does their job, the running back has nowhere else to go. You wind up getting, again, an easy tackle. This is a very elementary play. Uh, of course, we're showing this because when you play, again, a team like Vanderbilt and you have a talent advantage like Florida does, half the battle is just simply staying within yourself. You can see you're at the point of attack. Here's your line of scrimmage. Uh, Kentucky's had no problem pushing back their entire left side of their line a good half yard to a yard. So Florida's defensive line should have a lot of success controlling the line of scrimmage. Florida's linebackers, which have struggled all year long with gap fills, with proper control of where the play is going, with leverage when they get blocked in this situation here. Uh, it is something to watch. That's why we're talking about it right up front with this film study. Pay attention to if Florida improves on some things that they've struggled with all season long. We mentioned at the opening that Ken Seals loves to throw bombs. He fits the mold of a Texas quarterback. He's a gunslinger. He will take chances. This is a really nice play design against Kentucky's cover three. If you watch this on television, this is what you'll see. Whole lot of nothing. How'd that guy get over there and how did he get open? You really have no idea. The replay they show you doesn't tell you either. But thankfully, you've got this film study. Vanderbilt is going to run. And across the field, and this is not going to be to scale because we're going to lose it, but he's going to about 15 to 20 yards downfield, and he's going to come all the way across. So he's going to run a, 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 a left to right dig, but really he's, he's running all the way across to draw this cover three defender. And I'm going to draw this for you on a, on a mini scale so you can see in a second. But for now, pay attention to what happens here. And they're going to have this wide receiver stem inside on the start, come up into the seam, and then he is going to wind up snapping to the corner, snapping to the corner. Now I'm going to show you why this matters in a second. Again, heavy play action team. Look for Vanderbilt to play action and ball fake a lot. It's what they rely on. So there's your fake. There's your fake. There's your ball. And there's your touchdown. Wide open. All right, wide open. Now, of course, I wish I had the all 22 to show you exactly what's happening here. But instead, let me just draw this up and stick with me and I'll show you the routes that they ran, even if I don't have field. I'm gonna show you by backing them up. So let's back these guys up so I have space to show you exactly what's happening. And let's start them here. Okay, now his route is gonna come in like this, like we mentioned, he's gonna get down the field. He's gonna wind up coming all the way across, all right? His route is gonna start here. He's gonna stem in, and then he's gonna to go to the corner. Okay, now why is this gonna work? This is gonna work because Kentucky's gonna cover three. One, two, and three. These are your safeties. Their responsibilities are to drop back and to take the deep thirds. Take the deep thirds, okay? So what happens is this corner is going to carry this receiver, which is him right here. He's going to carry him. And as he stems in to this point, he's here. He thinks, I'm going to pass this off to my safety. He's running a post route. I'm going to pass this route off. My responsibility is done. That's exactly what he in fact does. He then turns his head around, and what does he notice? Well, coming right underneath him is this route. So he has a route in front of him. We give him some eye candy. He turns his head, and he comes down on this route. It's at that point in time that the ball is thrown to the corner. Now, what happens here with the single high center safety in the cover three? He's in the middle. His job's the middle as he is preparing to stop this post route. He's digging back. He's getting ready to drive on any route in the middle of the field. He knows he's supposed to have help from his cover three corner over here. So as soon as this peels back out, he lets this go. This cover three corner makes the mistake. Ultimately, he's going to have to keep digging back. He should not have let him go yet. He should have checked on him one or two more steps and he would have had him. But the timing is perfect by Vanderbilt. This is, in fact, a really good cover three beater, and it does take a lot of time. So Vanderbilt prefers these play action routes to take a long time to develop. This is not a fast developing route. You can see he sells the play action. He's going to settle back, 
has the time he needs, and then completes this ball downfield. And we can get to a little stop here to show you what's happening. This is your cover three corner. He dropped down on him. So he comes across the field this way. His route is now from here, but originally it started like this, right? He stems in, and then here's your, here's your backside cover three, and then here's your center safety, who was here preparing for a post route that he didn't get. So again, one more time, this route came from here. This route bowed itself back out like this. So at this point in time, it looked like he was going to take a post route. He did not. He turned it. The same point in time, this guy bailed out to stop this route here. Ball's thrown over the top into the end zone for a touchdown. There it is. Again, I wish I had the all 22 to show you. Hopefully that made sense. It's a really good play design. It's an excellent way to two on one that cover three safety. They high load, high load that cover three safety. You can see they're talking about it right here. Always fun to get in football. Check the replay. Look at this here. This is the cover three safety. And what he says is, hey, I had a guy that was coming underneath me across the field and I took him. And this guy's probably saying, it doesn't really matter. You're still, you still have to be back in your deep thirds. You're going to let the one in front of you go. Be with the deepest man. That's not your responsibility. But regardless, a really nice play by Vanderbilt. And then you hope that ESPN gives you what you want here, which is a highlight so you can see the play. Show us the angle, ESPN. But instead, we get this. Let's just focus on the play fake because that really didn't matter in this play. Did it hold the linebackers? Sure, it did. Now, you can see at least for a second, here he is, right? He's stemming in on your screen. For just a second, he disappears. And then here you can see a little helmet here. He's coming across. So you see the action I talked about. That's all you're going to see. He had kept coming across. Here's your cover three safety again, who ate that underneath. There's your trail players. This is your middle safety here. And he bowed that back out. So there it is. Really nice timing. Really nice play. Look for Vanderbilt to try against Florida to get some downfield uh, plays using play action to buy enough time to be able to run those, again, those long, long developing two-on-one plays. It takes a good amount of protection to do so. Vanderbilt gives up a decent amount of sacks. Florida is leading the SEC in sacks. It should be tricky for them to do so, but expect them to try. This is another excellent cover three beater from Vanderbilt. They don't hit on this one. Seals is a freshman. He'll still lock into his receivers. We talked about this in the podcast, but he does also make full field reads. So unlike Felipe Franks, who we broke down last week, Seals will read the entire field. And for a freshman, that's definitely a good sign uh, for his future. But at times, he'll also lock into what he thinks he has pre-snap. Now, Vanderbilt's going to have the perfect call on here. Kentucky is again going to play a cover three. Here you're going to see one, two, and then you don't know if you're a quarterback yet, right? You see this distance and you think, hey, this looks like could be a cover three to me. Could also be a cover four. Not sure until the post snap. Let's see what happens post snap. And we'll tell you, we'll confirm. There's the snap. Okay, right away, take the snap. Keep your eyes up. This is what he thinks and sees. There's the mesh point he's gonna read. He sees the free safety come down against the run. He knows he has space behind this free safety. Other safety bailed off the screen, right? So you're gonna have space underneath here, underneath the safety off your screen and over the head of the one that just took your play action run fake. However, He's got an even better situation over here. So there is Vanderbilt's best receiver. He is going to run an excellent cover three beater route and out and up. And then you're going to have a post coming in here. Okay, now this is going to be really, really good. Why is this so good? This cover three corner has got to go with the deepest man. He's going to have to run with this post route, which is not going to break where you see it on screen. Again, I don't have enough space to show you, so I'm breaking these routes off early. But he's going to have to turn and run. He's going to disappear off your screen. This, this defender here, his responsibility primarily is to take the flats away, right? He's also, as you've seen before, he can be a conflict defender where he's going to play run or pass, which is why he's holding for a second. He's waiting to see if this ball is handed off or not. Now it's not handed off. Now he's in trouble. He thinks he should have help over top of him on the cover three, which he should. But again, unfortunately for him, if we know what kind of zone a team is running, we can take advantage of the rules and we can run perfect plays against it. There it is. Now at this point in time, Seal should be reading this matchup. He should see that this guy is absolutely already beat. There's no way he's going to be able to catch up to that go route. And he should look to see where, if again, if it's cover three, he's got a single high safety. He's got a safety in the middle. He has two guys that are splitting the field on either side of that safety. So he has deep thirds. And he should be looking for this. This is the matchup that he wants. But instead, he locks in on the route that is definitely not the desirable route. And that is going to be the post. 
Here's your deep post. There it is coming inside. There's your cover three safety, splitting the field in thirds. You can't see him yet, but obviously if it's cover three, as you all know well by now, we are going to have a defender on top of this that you can't see. But look at this. Not only was this defender already beat, he was already beaten. Again, we can't see him. He was already beat, right? He's beat here even if he stays up. We're going to lose him here. But even if he stays up, he's beat. But now he's really beat because he's falling down. So what that tells you is Seals really didn't look at this. Seals saw the free safety drop down. He knew he had a post. He knew he had a post with a, a corner that was playing off, and he felt like he had the seam window here, which could be true with a perfect ball. But the reason you're running this play is if you get cover three, this is where that ball's got to go. That's also your, your best receiver and favorite target. So he just misses this read. And instead of having a wide open touchdown pass, he's going to put this ball where the, the cover three safety, the center safety is just waiting for this. He makes a bad play on this ball. This should be a pick. Look, he's in perfect position. He just misreads this. Easy interception. Vanderbilt's got to wind up playing defense, which he does. He's going to play defense right here to try to prevent a pick. Nice job. But again, all in all, excellent play design. Here's the cover three. This guy should be over here. He's got to pass this one off. We saw earlier in the game, they passed one off and it cost him, right? So this one, he's like, all right, I'm not going to pass this off. I'm going to stay with this guy. And uh, instead, we get beat up the rail. So two different ways to attack the cover three. Either way, you're two on one essentially, in this case, this guy. And then you're running off your cover three safety. In this case, again, the smart play here from him is he needs to be bailing. As soon as he sees him go to the post, he needs to keep bailing. That's the solution to both of his problems. If you're playing cover three safety and you're bailing and you see a post in front of you, you have to be looking with your eyes to see if anyone else is coming deep to you. You cannot just run with this post. You got to pass that off. And as you pass it off, keep backpedaling to make sure that route doesn't do what we saw last time which is snap itself back to the corner. All it takes is one or two more steps. You're playing cover three safety and you can cover both those routes effectively. Again, if a team has a beater on you, if they have the right play called, your job is to minimize the damage and not give up touchdowns. And again, in this play, Kentucky very fortunate that we don't have Cam running for a touchdown down the sideline here. So for Florida, who has obviously struggled in past defense at times, uh, depending on the personnel and who's in there, this could be something to watch for. Vanderbilt does have a good handle of uh, what kind of what kind of routes to run against various defenses, and also as a quarterback who will throw the ball. Regardless, he's going to throw the ball even when it's not a great look. So it should be a boomer bust game for Vanderbilt and a chance for Florida to get interceptions. It's fourth and goal for Vanderbilt. When Vanderbilt gets in the red zone, they're going to bring in sometimes, not always, sometimes, and maybe in fact a lot of the time. Number five, Mike Wright. He's also a freshman. He's a dual threat quarterback. They like to use him to run the ball in primarily. They'll run a lot of running plays in the red zone. So Florida should be aware of that. And this is a really nice play design by Vanderbilt. They're going to motion someone over. Why? Well, they want to create some confusion. We're going to see why in a second. They want to see first, are we in straight man? No, we're not. Notice here, that's a pass off signal. Hey, pass this guy off. Someone else now has to pick him up. Someone else has to pick him up. Now we're going to send our running back out. Send our running back out. Okay, great. Hey, you need to get him. You're back out there. Okay, I got that. No problem. But what we really want to do is we want to come down here. So we're just hoping that we've confused maybe this guy, which in this case it's going to be this guy, with his assignment. Who is he taking? Who is he covering? Let's rewind it one more time. Okay, he starts off like this. He's good. He's a bonus defender here. He's going to play the edge looking at the tight end, making sure he holds the edge, watch any flat release. He's going to be the first flat defender that we have. And we introduce some conflict. Am I covering him? Am I still a flat defender here, letting this guy go to my safety back here? What is my responsibility? Let's give this guy a chance to blow this. We're going to roll out and blow it. In fact, he does. Again, you can't see here. Try to take a look. He's going to engage with the wide receiver. That's not his job. And instead... Tight end is going to release unguarded here on the little out route. Easy throw, wide open. We got two defenders here. One of them should obviously be down here, which no doubt is him. So nice play by Vanderbilt, but look for Vanderbilt to use some pre-snap motions to get the matchups they want and also look for them to run the ball in, as you're going to see here a little bit later with Mike Wright. But these plays will be easy throws, oftentimes one option, one option throws using some trickeration. Uh, because they don't want Mike Wright to just stand in the pocket and throw. So if you see number five come in the game, be ready for a wildcat package, a lot of zone read, and then, of course, some, some gadget plays 
uh, and, and some, some tight end releases and some fakes to the flat like this one. We're in the third quarter. Vanderbilt is on the ropes, but not out of the game yet. It's 31-14. And since we are in the red zone, who do you think's in the game? Of course, number five, Mike Wright, is in the game. He's back in. Another nice play design here from Vanderbilt. We're going to motion in our receiver. Again, this is our best receiver. Motion him in. We're going to block. We're going to block on this left side. Now, why are we doing this? All of this is really just deception. Kentucky then is going to counter by bringing pressure, which is very smart. Bring pressure in here if you see their best receiver coming into the formation to block. You would assume the ball is going to be coming on a run play this way, which is going to tell our linebackers ball is going this way. Let's see if we can make that happen. There it is. There it is. They get everything they want. Let's see where this breaks down. This defender here has got to hold the edge, right? You've got to hold the edge. Anytime you have a running back and a quarterback in the backfield, you have to hold the edge. You cannot do this. You cannot blow this play up this way. You're going to let the quarterback escape. Cannot be done. Anytime you're playing a quarterback that can run, it's really simple. Don't get crazy. Hold the edge. Let him come to you. Then let your linebacker fill in this gap right next to you. That is your job. Do your job. He does not do his job. The play fake works. Notice how all of Kentucky is sucked in here. So the pre-snap action got them. We have one defender left and inexplicably it got him too. Uh, I'm sorry for this guy, but he's not going to make a tackle. The ball goes over here, right? You've got to play smart. He should at least be holding the edge. He's not. It's going to be a foot race. Now that guy's quick because look at his angle. He doesn't have one, but he's quick enough to make a stop and a tackle here just before the goal line. This actually winds up not being a touchdown just before the goal line. But again, all of this happens with some very basic pre-snap motion to movement. All of this could have been avoided if the weak side defender just held the edge, held the gap. So for Florida against Vanderbilt, pay attention to what happens with defensive line, which has been getting better and better and better at gap control. Pay also attention to the linebackers and the corners to see if they are on the weak side and they have a free responsibility. How do they handle that? Are they overflowing too far to one way or are they doing their job and staying home? Fourth and goal again, Mike Wright in the game. Obviously, again, the red zone quarterback almost always or most of the time, or 50% of the time. Depends on the game, depends on the matchup, but they do like to use him here. Expect to see this against Florida. So we saw earlier that Mike Wright ran a ball in. We've seen that they've run several play fakes. I haven't shown you some of the plays where obviously Kentucky has stopped them because they keep getting to fourth and goal, but we're going to see yet our friend gap control happen here again. Now let's look here. Here's your unblocked defender by design. So you're going to say we're going to send him here. It's his job to read. Read, 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 read. His job to read. Again, let's watch this one more time. Zone read defender. By design, Vanderbilt is not going to block him. Okay, now obviously some of you watching this channel know a ton about football, and this is very obvious for you. For others of you, this is the first time you've seen these concepts or you're just getting used to them. So if we're going to run a zone read, we're going to fake a handoff here to our running back. By design... He's not supposed to block him. That's why you're letting him go. He's going to be your read defender. You can't block everyone. You got to have a read defender. So you're going to let him go. And what you're hoping is he does what happens here, that he eats this fake, loses his gap control, stops doing his job, and ultimately blows this play for you, which is what's going to happen. This is a great job, by the way, of, of, of making sure that you control your gap here by Kentucky's player that we can't see. Uh, but regardless, he, he has cost us the play here. So he eats this fake as he should not. He should be waiting. He should be waiting. Don't come downhill yet. Wait until you confirm that he does not have the ball. He doesn't do that. So he's going to escape out. There he is. He escapes out. Uh-oh. And he wins the foot race with the defensive lineman, who also happens to be pretty quick because he almost gets there. But regardless, regardless for Florida, we'd like to see the gap control improve. If we want to beat Alabama, we cannot continue to have gap control issues. But this play was entirely made by one guy. Again, the beauty of football is all 11 guys have to do their job. And if he does his job, this play doesn't happen. He doesn't. He goes hero mode, costs his team a touchdown. Keep an eye on that in the red zone on Saturday. Vanderbilt is going to hit Kentucky here with another coverage beater. Pre-snap, this looks like cover six. Cover six is going to be cover two on one side and then cover four on the other side, which essentially means that this safety is going to bail. This safety is also going to bail. These guys are going to play cover two. So he's going to take half the field, and these guys are going to take a quarter. They're going to take a quarter. There it is. One quarter, one quarter, and then one half. That's how that's going to work on the back end. And because that's going to happen, 
That means this corner is gonna play aggressive on anything that you see in this part of your screen. Hitches, out routes, slant routes in his zone without chasing all the way across, right? But anything that enters in right here in this box, he's gonna jump and play super aggressive on. So the hole behind him is here, right? So a smart play is gonna to be to take our receiver and run off into the safety. Let's run him off, let's get him out of the way. And then let's have some nice action that it takes advantage with our best receiver of the hole that we know is there. Again, so we know they're in zone. Again, classic cover six formation here. Four on this side, two on this side, like we just talked about. Pre-snap, everything looks good. Let's take the snap and see what happens. You just saw the receiver go flying off the screen. Now we're gonna see what looks to be an out route, which is smart, why? Because we know the corner is gonna wind up playing very aggressive on the out route. Very aggressive, here he is, he is aggressive. So he contacts him and he's looking, he's ready to make a pick. He wants to come downhill on this. He wants to make a play. And then he's also gonna see the running back come out here because again, his job is the flats. He's not gonna chase any deep breaking route. So first he makes contact on the out route, ball does not go to the out. Then he looks to the next flat receiver, which is gonna be the running back. Looks to take him. Unfortunately for him, the go route has cleared away the safety, the only other defender on that side, leaving, of course, the best receiver, Cam, wide open, wide open here on this play. And for Vanderbilt, unfortunately, Cam was too excited. He stepped out before he caught the ball, which rendered this play ineffective. But this is your cover two corner. Again, he did his job. This is not his fault. He did his job. This is just a good play by Vanderbilt against a coverage uh, that was wrong for the play that they had on. But the primary reason this happens, and you see this happen in college football, is Kentucky is running a pre-snap, very static defense. This is, again, whether you're a freshman or not, this is a very easy defense to read. You know exactly what you have here with this. And then post-snap, Kentucky does nothing to change that. So it's one thing if Kentucky lines up in a cover six and then post-snap changes something else, but they don't. So Vandy has the right play on. Kentucky lines up what they're going to stay in uh, on the snap. And then post-snap, they stay in it. So essentially pre-snap confirmation, post-snap confirmation, nothing tricky, plain vanilla, static defense. It's too easy to beat that in the modern passing game. It just doesn't really work against even a freshman quarterback. And for him, it's an easy read and diagnosis. Look, he goes right away. He goes right to it. He knows where he should be going, puts a nice ball out there. But as we mentioned, Cam had stepped out of bounds. So this play uh, was not one that obviously counted in the books. But I show it to you because, again, expect Vanderbilt to try to attack vertically to put corners and safeties in two-on-one conflict uh, and, and run some some nice passing plays. So if you saw the final score of the Kentucky Vanderbilt game, it was 38-35, but here we have just four minutes left, just four minutes left and it's 38-21. Vanderbilt is driving. They are driving. Kentucky is playing a pseudo prevent defense, trading time for points, knowing that Vanderbilt is running out of time and points. The reason I show you this play is a nice delayed handoff here from Vanderbilt. This is a classic, classic play against a team that's dropping. You can see the linebackers are not reading run first. They're playing pass first. But regardless, they are ready for this. And this is what I want to show you. This is why tackling is important. They are ready for this. In comes the free safety. So we're dropping our linebacker first, but our free safety, is, he's going to read run first. Why? Because he's further away from the ball. He has time to do so. And by dropping our linebacker, we're going to allow him not to get stuck underneath the play where a dig route comes over his head. We're going to make sure we protect that. And we're going to have our free safety come straight downhill because he can. And all he needs to do is make a tackle. So here he comes. He's ready. And then, no. Let's see if he makes a tackle this time. Here he comes in and still no. Nope, doesn't make the tackle. One more time. Let's give him one more shot. He's there. And no. So terrible tackling technique. That should be a two-yard gain, and instead it goes for, for 15, right? So for Florida, whose tackling has gotten better as the season has gone on, that's something that definitely has gotten better. Uh, for Vanderbilt, again, a lot of their yards are going to have to be off of Florida's miscues, especially in the run game. So keep an eye on that for Saturday. All right, we've got ourselves a game. It's 38-28. There's a minute and 23 seconds left. Teams have definitely come back down from this before. Vanderbilt's on their own 22-yard line, so they've got quite a bit of work to do. Kentucky here is going to play man. They're going to play cover one man. Cover one man, so we're manned up here, manned up here. We will be manned up here, despite the fact that he's playing off man. Manned up here and manned up here. So we're in straight man. And again, we mentioned that Seals is, in fact, a gunslinger. The route he's going to wind up hitting here 
is a comeback route to the sideline. This is not going to be open. It's going to be well played by Kentucky. But again, he's a slinger. He's throwing. Tuts himself up. Sees something that he likes. Which again is really nothing. This is great coverage, right? If you see a blue blur coming downhill, not so great. Great coverage. Great pass. This is a great pass. This is perfect defense. Perfect defense. Again, one more time. Perfect defense. He's breaking down on this route. He actually has an angle to pick this pass off. This ball is thrown high, right where only his receiver can catch it, high into the outside. Turns into a completion. Again, you're not going to fault this play here. In theory, this much time left, you could say tackle him in bounds, but there's also a chance to just knock him right out of the game. He had a great, great read on that. Doesn't wind up getting it, and this actually turns into a big play for Vanderbilt. Dance to the sideline. Nice gain, nice play. So great throw there by Seals. For a freshman, it's a very, very high-level throw. He's got a strong arm and a lot of confidence. A lot of guys would not make that throw. He knew he had man-to-man. -man. He took his comeback route, threw the ball high and outside. Nice play. Also, keep, keep in mind for this, if Vanderbilt does get behind time or they want to start playing up-tempo or in two-minute drill, expect them to run two-by-two. Two. They will move guys over and run a three-by-one, of course, but they really like two-by-two. Two. It, it seems to me on film that Seals prefers two-by-two two more than any other passing formation, especially if they have to go quick. Uh, it's what they did you know, really all season long when they've had opportunities to do this. So take a look for that on Saturday as well. It's now the very next play and the final play of our offensive film study. We're going to stay in that two-by-two two formation. Two receivers, two receivers, one running back. And now, although you can't see it, Kentucky is no longer playing man on first and 10. They're backed off. They're playing cover four. So we've got a corner. we got a safety that you can't see, a safety that you can't see, and then a corner over here that you can't, you cannot see either that's down over here. So they're going to wind up playing cover four on, on, on the snap. They're all just going to back up. So what is Vanderbilt going to run? They're going to run a cover four beater. Here we go. You're going to have a go route here. So you have a seam go in between, as we highlight on the Arkansas video, in between your cover four defender is the best place to attack any static zone. And then you're just going to have a simple hitch route here from both of your outside receivers, although you can't see it on both sides. So a symmetrical route attacking cover four. It's a good route combo. Nice little beater. Kentucky, again, is going to trade the underneath route. They're going to trade the underneath route for time. But either way, as a quarterback in the two-minute drill, you have to take what teams are giving you. Take what they're giving you. Be smart. Don't try to force things, which he does. Nice ball. Delivered on time. And Vanderbilt gets a nice eight or nine yard gain in the span of really just six seconds. That's really good two-minute drill stuff. It's smart, disciplined way to take it. Again, for a freshman, Seals can throw the ball well. He will throw the ball. He's not afraid. He can certainly read static defensive coverages. Uh, so it's not something you want to just be doing on every single play, dropping into a static defense. In my opinion, really there's rarely ever a reason to run static shell defenses in high-level college football. It surprises me how many teams still do this. Uh, there's just much better ways on the back end to play defense without getting incredibly complicated and going to a 500-page pattern-matching defensive playbook like Nick Saban has. But regardless, running static defenses against teams that understand air raid passing principles, spread offense passing principles, is just not a recipe for success. So we will see what Florida chooses to do on Saturday. Now, at this point in time, we would typically look at the opposing team's defense. I got to tell you, there's nothing special about Vanderbilt's defense personnel-wise or scheme-wise. They don't do anything that we haven't already seen a lot. Uh, they're under-talented, and really, despite they, the fact that they returned all 11 of their starters, they're just not a very good unit. I couldn't think of a fruitful reason to display defensive plays just for the sake of displaying them. I want to bring you content that is interesting, that ups your knowledge, uh, and so we'll save defensive breakdowns on future opponents instead, and we'll leave Vanderbilt's off the table for this week. As always, if you like the content, drop a like on this video. Check us out on social media. Check out the pod. Drop us a dono on Patreon. And tune in next time where we will bring you the post-game analysis on Monday from the Vanderbilt game. Go Gators.